going on, everyone? Welcome to Half Slow's Basic Degenomics, a weekly Twitter Spaces conversation where we invite those who are actively shaping the future of DeFi and the crypto industry to share their alpha. Today is episode 25 with Henry, a true Giga Chad. We're going to be talking about trading bots, market signals, degen strategy. We're going to be going through it all. Henry, why don't you introduce yourself before we get started? All right. Uh, hello, guys. I uh, need to check my micro first. Okay. Let me show you hear me clearly. Oh, I can hear you, bro. Oh, good. All right. Oh, this is the first time I uh, on air like with the uh, with the space. So um, yeah, um, uh, you know, you know, maybe some of you know me from uh, uh, when I was in uh, Abitum, right, in early this year, and uh, now I continue uh, the journey to uh, Dejan, <laughs> and uh, here we are. I'm here. Thank you so much for joining us, man. We, we love your account. You know, I'm following you all the time, you know, and uh, just appreciate the alpha that you share there. So we're definitely excited to talk with you. We've got some questions, so let's just dive right in. And, uh, you know, the first one we have for you here, many people have left the industry and interest has cooled off. But what narratives are you most excited about right now? Um, yeah, um, actually, the, we... Uh... We know that we are all in uh, the bear market. We are not in the bull market yet. And uh, right now, the market is really dry. And uh, I, I see no fresh money inflow. And uh, we know that the world economy is still very unstable. And uh, investors or traders still don't want to invest their money into uh, high-risk assets like uh, crypto, right? And um, But uh, the market is always moving. And uh, we, we can see from the, the early this year until now, we see uh, with the airdrop program from Upjump and uh, Aptos to keep the market working and running um, and uh, with so many narratives. And uh, we, we still remember the, the biggest narrative this year is a review with the GMX right? and then uh, LSD fee and then uh, and now, currently, we see Telegram bot Meta is running, and uh, it's it's work really well. People uh, love it. We see uh, Unibot and uh, uh, Mastro and everywhere, right? So um, uh, currently, because I I see uh, um, the Telegram is the main social for for crypto. Um, many people and many uh, group using. Telegram for communicate, so um, it's really work well currently. I love it. Yeah. Um. So just to just to clarify, you know, for you know, the market is somewhat quiet. You know, are you focusing on Telegram bots right now? Is that kind of your main focus at this point in the market cycle? Uh. Yes, but but you, you I see that the Telegram bot will end soon, and uh, and now I'm focusing on the new meta. Maybe uh, it's base trend. The base is new, and I, I, I see this really. Uh, uh, I see many opportunity there in, uh, in base. <laughs> Soon, people maybe we will uh, love airdrop again, and then we move to base, and then there will be new hype of the market. And then uh, we will see, we will see. I think um, the next narrative will be uh, on base. Yeah, I, 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 I did uh, some research, and I really like base. It's really fast, it's, it's like a two trend, and uh, it's really good. And many people will we will like they will crazy for for airdrop maybe maybe airdrop from base <laughs> no one know but they hope so and the hope bring more people yeah so um uh, but the the, uh, the bot meta the telegram bot meta is still in here for a while not ending really now but as a researcher and um and a trader I need to find a new narrative so yeah base base will be new narrative. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll double click on some of that stuff. So obviously very, uh, very familiar with the Arbitrum airdrop. 
Um, that's yeah. actually candidly, that's how I first discovered you is, uh, I think we became friends when you started becoming pretty active in the Arbitrum ecosystem when I was there. And, um, the other, the other piece of alpha that's really interesting is, uh, I won't, I won't share, but, you know, coming from Amazon, I'm a big data guy, um, probably not at the level you are, <laughs> but, uh, mm -hmm. I have data that is basically confirmed that you are one of the top traders, uh, out there. Um, like you have great calls, your calls tend to perform really well compared to others. And, you know, I've talked about this in other spaces, but a lot of times, you know, folks assume, you know, follower count and, and, you know, quality of trades tend to be correlated. That's not the case, right? So a lot of times I say, you know, the best traders tend to live in this 10 to 30,000 range, which I think, again, you, you kind of confirm that, um, you know, one quick shout out I would give for you is, um, I actually did start following your personal telegram channel. And, um, and one of the things that I actually love about it is you're really transparent with kind of all your buys that you personally make. Um, and I think, you know, one of the things, um, what, you know, we'll dive into a, a little bit here is, is a lot of folks that are starting out, you know, they think crypto Twitter is like the best source of alpha. I think we all know that you're usually too late. Um, but what I like there is, is, you know, if I want to basically mimic your transactions and, and, you know, a lot of folks will use uh, technology to track wallet transactions. Um, you just make it very seamless for folks. So I, you know, for me, I just would say thank you because you've helped me become a better trader purely just by kind of watching what you're doing. Um, and then that being said, you know, one thing just to kind of kind of go back to what, what do you think are some of the most common mistakes you see, you know, new crypto traders make? Um, you know, is it where they're sourcing their alpha from? Is it, um, you know, diving into things that are too risky? Like, like what, what do you think are some of the things that new traders can uh, can try to avoid? Uh, okay, firstly, thank you. First, I I am what my style of trading is uh, like. I try to educate the uh, uh, community. It must be said again. It's good that you you can uh, get something from me. Uh, okay, now go back to the question. Um, yeah, this is uh, quite a long question actually, because it's not just new buy, but also like uh, veteran trader and old trader still has some. Uh, same mistake, and and I can see it from them. Not not just new buy, <laughs> and um okay, I'm I'm gonna share you uh, some uh, something I, I learned by heart. Okay, it's in my mistake from myself, so I um I learn it and I uh, make change and then I adapt and then I I move on, uh and it's worked really well. I know it's worked well because it's helped me print a lot of money, uh, so it's worked, right? Um. So um, the first thing, the first thing for for people who join the the crypto market is, um, they they should lower their expectation. Um, normally we join the crypto market because we want to uh, earn money, earn profit quickly. Uh, because it's high risk, high return, right? And uh, we uh, we want to do it fast. But and we un unprepare. It's not you. You you think that okay? Maybe you go to the crypto market. You buy a token, and then the next day we you will double your value or something like that. But it's actually not. It's just a story about the lucky thing in uh, in bull market. And or sometimes people want to to tell you about that, and you will fall more to get into the, the market. But it's not, and uh, you. End up being a, a backholder or uh, at loss, yes. And so the first thing you need to to do is lower your expectation. I I never expect uh, I will bring a lot of money. I am um, I just expect okay I would I would try to uh, remain in profit when I, I try. So that's my expectation. But sometimes it's work really good because I I, I don't put high hope. <laughs> All right. First thing, lower your expectation. It's really important. And then the second thing is, uh, you before you join the market, you want to earn money, but it's the wrong, the wrong thinking, the wrong approaching. Uh, you must know how to survive the market first, because in the market, when you join the market, uh, it's like uh, PVB, right? Person versus like you, you fighting against other. You're fighting again again as the not it's not a game not a normal game and when you join the market people will try to win you and how how you defend like you you really are new by you unprepared you you don't know the market you don't have a appropriate tool a good tool to uh, research or 
or um, to buy a token for trading, yeah. And um, you think you will win the market easy, but now uh, you are new buy. So the first thing very important, you have to learn how to survive the market. And uh, and after a while, like uh, after a few years, the the best strategy to survive the market is to uh, yeah you have to okay for new buy and for everybody, you must learn how to to uh, control your portfolio, your investment. For example, if if you have one thousand US dollar, right? You uh, it's initial investment, and when you uh, invest any token, you should not invest the whole your whole bag. Like, do not spend nine hundred US dollar or one thousand US dollar for just one token only, because the the price will be very fluctuated, and uh, it will be up a lot or down a lot. If it's up, you're happy. But if down, well, 90% will be down and you will be crazy. And maybe you cut loss. Uh, and it's really bad. And and that's it, the common mistake. People tend to buy a big bag uh, at one moment. And um, they end up at loss. Uh, so that's, that is the most important thing. You should never uh, buy everything. Or just buy one bag. So for for me, strategy is simple. I uh, divide my uh, my portfolio into many uh, good token, and um, I accumulating it. It's not like I spend uh, everything on one token or two token. I always have money to reserve, and uh, some some investment will bring benefit, but some will not. And maybe I will cut lot. Yeah. It's normal when trading. You have you have two choice only, right? Uh, book profit or cut loss. <laughs> it's, it's simple. In the market, you, you just want, have two choices. You cut loss or you book profit. So uh, um, my, my recommend is you have to uh, learn how to survive market by control your, your fund, your investment. Um, yeah. And and of course the last thing here is, uh, many many good people I know, they are good but and uh, they have uh, a big ego you know, uh, sometimes they uh, predict the market, uh, and it's correct, because they're lucky or yeah I think they're lucky, and uh, they think the market will follow their predicts, but it's actually not, because um, the market the market is. is it's not running by anyone, um, and you cannot predict the market one hundred percent. So, uh, if if in case you are correct uh, the first time, but the second time or the third time or the fourth time, you will you will not correct anymore. You will be wrong, and if you wrong, okay, just wrong for the first time, and uh, your ego is too high, you will try to revenge the market. And when you start to revenge the market, it's, now it's, it's bad. <laughs> it's really, really bad. Do not try to revenge the market. And uh, for me, I just move on. Okay, okay. I, I accept I accept it and I move on. I find a new trade. So that's my, my first suggestion. Do not try to revenge the market and lower your ego. Because I see many good men, uh, they lost money because they, they try to revenge um, the market. Uh, so it, 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 it's, it's like okay we just we just a player in the market so we just follow the rule we uh, uh we enjoy it that's it I, I think uh I have three uh, suggestions for for new buy it that's good yeah no that's great advice I mean it's it's so funny I think Alan and I uh <laughs> <laughs> probably can attest to this. I mean, you know, when I first got into crypto, I, I was playing the big bad game, right? And a token performs, you get lucky, you know, you make some nice profits. I think, you know, obviously over time as I've studied you and I've studied some other traders that I really uh, look up to and admire, um, you know, one of the things I've noticed on your Telegram channel quite a bit is is these small bags, right? It's, you know, you're buying a lot of different tokens, but your bag sizes tend to be smaller. And I'll be honest, I, you know, not investment advice, you know, do, do your own uh, research, but I um, I started mimicking kind of your model. And and I'm not going to lie, like it, it, it's, it's really worked well for me. I mean, I've had, obviously, to your point, some tokens go down to zero. I have a, I've had some tokens pump. You know, what, what I don't typically see in my own portfolio is a 
you know, 500% increase on the entire portfolio. But I do find that in general, I, I am consistently more up than I am down. Um, and then I think, again, from a diversification standpoint, you know, even before crypto, you know, I invest in stocks, startups, real estate, yeah. now crypto. And I think it's I think taking that mentality from, you know, the traditional uh, areas of investment and applying it to crypto uh, de definitely holds true. Um, and then obviously, you know, like I said before, the notion of taking profit, I think there's a lot of folks to your point where they let the ego get to them. They see something, you know, pump 800 percent. They think they're going to ride that you know, to the top. And then two hours later, they go straight to zero. So I, um, I agree with you. And I think also, too, you know, by diversifying and, and you know, having those smaller bags, um, it, it's easier to keep the ego in check, right? Because it's like you're not seeing those massive gains. You're not seeing those massive losses. And to your point, when I do get a loss, I, I just move on, right? Because it's not like I lost my entire bag or my entire portfolio. So I think, um, I think in general, this is a, is a great, uh, great piece of advice. And I don't know if you want to add anything to this, but Obviously, you know, when we do um, get out of the bear and we get into the bull, you know, we'll see obviously a lot more, you know, retail investors with little experience, you know, never click links, you know, all those things. Any advice that you'd give to folks that, you know, are less crypto native, um, you know, I think in general, some of them, you know, onboard in different ways. But, I, you know, I think the advice that you give definitely holds true to them. But anything else you would add for uh, for the normies? <laughs> Actually, in, in both circle, it, it's everything is simple. Everything is so easy. Everyone can can uh, bring uh, profit easily, you know. If they just buy a token, I it's it's really high, really high. Uh, so for for the new, maybe for the next next cycle, uh, I think they should know how to uh, uh, book profit and how to uh, cash out on time. Do not do not show formal <laughs> like the like old Jeff formal. <laughs> <laughs> like if they put the, the laser eyes <laughs> on their uh, on their PFB, then it will be a big problem, you know. Because um, the problem of the new buy in the in the next post circle is they will be really really high, really crazy high, and and then maybe they will all in everything because it brings so many so easy. So I I just one one thing only for for new buy when work for retailer when they each on the, the market in the post circle is. Uh, try to book profit, okay? Do not do not too full more. Book profit and book profit, cash out. That's it. I think it's important. Yeah. And uh, yeah, because uh, we we here for 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 investment for printing money, and if we too too full more, and if we keep putting money into the market, or we you keep printing and keep rotating to another token, yeah, the 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 portfolio might bigger and bigger, but if uh, if you are you are about uh, at the peak, okay, and it suddenly drop, you will losing more money, and it's cannot hold you anymore. So, uh, for the new buy in uh, the next cycle, they uh, should know how to book profit. That's important. For me, for me, like I cash out, um, I cash out my profit, uh, maybe uh, twice uh, a a month or sometimes once a month. I always cash out my profit. It's important. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's great advice. It's funny. Yeah. The, the, the FOMO thing. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Like I got caught in the FOMO trap early on in crypto, as I'm sure a lot of other folks did. And now, you know, the acronym that I look to is, is, is JOMO, the joy of missing out. And I think just, you know, to kind of put a, a pin in that, like the, the way I look at it is, you know, whether it's you or, you know, another trader that I, I admire, um, you know, I'll see a token pump and go up, you know, 50% in a day. And I'll say to myself, ah, oh, man, I should have bought it. But then, you know, it can go back down the next day or, you know, it can, it, you know, because it's such a volatile industry in general. And so yes. I think I think to your point, it's like you, you've got to celebrate your wins. You've got to move on from your losses. But I think the more you get fixated on on the misses, the more you're going to miss out on that next potential opportunity. And so I think now the way I look at it is, you know, when I see someone call something and it performs really well, I'm just like, oh, cool, great. But I know there's going to be another call like that, you know, within a week. So um, so I think that's great advice. I think, you know, avoiding FOMO is definitely something that definitely a lot of folks in this industry um, can can start to learn from. Yeah, got profit. Yes. Henry, but I did sell Unichat a little early today, I will say. But that's a conversation for another day. Um, I do kind of want to ask you also, uh, do you have any specific rules or guidelines you follow to exit a trade, either profit or loss? When do you know to pull out? Yeah. Um, okay. Depends on the market. Uh, right now we are in the bear market. I I would try to avoid uh, invest on uh, on any project that 
that has a big green candle, like really high already. Right. Okay, I, I will skip it. Maybe maybe it will have more chance to go higher, to go higher, but you never know. So <clears throat> it, it saves me a lot. Like, uh, and it's also about FOMO. When you see people, everybody talking about a token, you feel FOMO and you, you want to buy it. But okay, maybe you have some uh, some some gain, like 50%, but it suddenly drop and you had lost again. So um, the first thing is... Uh, Try to avoid buying any token that only strike. Okay, for on on I I am um, actually on text to like uh, uh be nice. Um, uh, you know uh YTT right currently they bump really really high right, and I said to my uh, uh follower do not buy that token because it's be crushed, and and then it crashed. Um, so it's normal game, okay. Uh, the first thing is uh, try to avoid any bumping token already. We we, we don't want to buy it, and uh, yeah, that's the first thing. And then the um, the second thing is try to find uh, this is kind of um, uh, you can you must look at the 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 chart, uh, the pricing and everything. You know uh, we should buy low. And sell high, right? <laughs> this the, the rule is simple. We buy low and sell high. We not buy high and, and sell low. <laughs> but many people don't cannot do it. Um so you, you have to find uh, your position. Uh, uh, you you uh, don't know it and you buy the bottom or give the box and you then so you book profit. And I always tell my uh, follower that you should take the issue out uh, as soon as possible. So uh, you skew your investment in a, because we don't, we never know what happened next. Maybe we will crash with bad news or whatever. So many bad news in, in crypto. Uh, so we have to secure our investment. And then we book profit. Uh, if it goes up, uh, we book profit slowly and slowly. Yeah, and until we uh, we have uh, around like twenty uh, percent of uh, of token, then we are good because at that point we are always in profit. So it's it's my uh, principle uh, for trading. Do uh, that's the two simple thing only, and it saves me a lot. Henry, it's easy. You just gotta buy high and sell low. You know, like what the, or buy low and sell high, whatever it's called. You know, it's it's simple. You know, it's you make it sound easy. I don't know why more people don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's simple, but 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 so many people cannot do it. Go <laughs> up or go down. You know, like come on. Um. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> the green they definitely caused some, some FOMO. And uh, also, let's talk a little bit about security as well, because booking profits is important, um, but securely booking profits is even better. Uh, how do you evaluate the security and legitimacy of exchanges and tools uh, before using them for trading? Do you, do you have any security tips that you can share so we can stay safe? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's important when trading on DEX because you uh, might get hacked or exploited uh, so easy and so, so very easy. I have to say very easy. And, uh, and for me, I got hacked so many times before. I lost a lot of money, actually, <clears throat> and I learned a lot from uh, how to secure my uh, my wallet, uh, how to secure my trading. Okay, first thing is uh, about MetaMask. Everybody talking about MetaMask, it's decentralized wallet, and uh, but uh, we have more wallet like uh, uh, Rap, Rappi or OKX or many. Okay, just wallet, but they all work the same. You have to protect your sick face or uh, your key, your key face. Uh, it's important, uh, but the more important thing is uh, you have to know uh, uh, you have to know that what are you doing in in while trading? You you are swapping or you connecting to any fixes uh, website, the app. You have to know what you are doing. Right? Do not <laughs> do not try anything new. It's really uh, dangerous for your wallet because the hacker might drain your access from your wallet very quick uh, and uh, and if you are new buy okay if you're new buy you should ask you should ask people uh, before you're doing anything you should ask 
I, I always tell my uh, my follower that uh, if you don't know anything, please ask. This is it's simple. You just ask, and someone will help you, or I will help you. So uh, first thing is try to ask, um, and uh, and then uh, you 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 will be good. All right. About the tips, when you know how to uh, use the wallet, you should have uh, multiple wallet. For me, I have many wallets and i will have a uh, few main main wallets the wallet will never connect to anything i just transfer money from other wallet or transfer access from other wallet to uh to the, the, the main wallet and this wallet will connect to nothing i not connect to the app not connect to uh either scan or whatever uh i will keep it isolated and um i hold most uh access my asset on uh, the isolate wallet and then i uh, have a trading wallet all right i i try a lot and i don't know if i get hacked or buy a scam token or whatever and um, but uh, the, the access on trading wallet will be small and limited and after one day or two day i will transfer access to, uh, to the whole wallet to the main wallet to hold it so the important thing is you have you must have multiple wallet and and uh, the trading wallet and the whole wallet so it will save you uh i don't know i don't know but it will save you because uh many new buy many newcomer retailer they they buy a scam token or they connect to the phishing the app and then they lost all the access and the hacker uh, well, they, they have many ways to, to hack your your wallet and it's really, really bad experience. And you also should uh, have uh, money on on, uh, on centralized exchange to just in case uh, your your Mac your MacBook or your phone stolen. Yeah, uh, because I, I, I saw it before. So you still have access on uh, on, on centralized exchange. It's, it's safer. Yeah, Henry, a couple of things on there. I, I, I definitely agree with pretty much everything you said. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, and, and, and like most traders, I mean, you learn this stuff the hard way. I mean, I've been hacked myself on, on my personal wallet. But um, but yeah, I mean, just to kind of re reiterate some of the things that you said that I, I, I support. One, you know, having, in a sense, you know, your safe deposit box, right? You have that one wallet that's one way in and no way out. I think that's definitely a best practice. Um, the other thing you mentioned that I agree with is is for your active trading wallet, just to really never keep a whole lot in there, right? Because that's the wallet that you're constantly constantly connecting. That's the wallet that you're, you know, constantly buying from. And so that way, you know, worst case scenario, that wallet gets exploited, you know, your your entire bag isn't gone, hopefully just a small amount. Um, and I guess this kind of ties back to just, just the notion of diversification in general. It's like, you know, if you're going to be an active trader, it's like the more wallets you diversify, the less likely you are to, to ultimately lose, you know, your entire bag. Um, one other thing I'd call out, we had a great, um, a great episode recently with a company called Wallet Guard, um, which is a Chrome extension that you can put in. And, and what I like about Wallet Guard is it basically does um, like predict uh, predictions against what you're going to do. So I've noticed now, you know, one, it notifies me every time my wallet needs to be updated, you know, to be more secure, which is great. Um, and then number two, you know, bef you know, if I click on a link or if I connect to something, um, it'll acknowledge that there might be a high risk scenario or it might acknowledge that it's identified some sort of malicious code. So that's that's been a great product for me. But um, but yeah, great advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I found many uh, secure way to, to secure my, my bag. But, you know, it's, we, we have to, to protect ourselves first. So I, I think it's, it's the best uh, practice. Um, then later we we improve our security. It's really really like crazy because you don't want to experience that, right? You don't want to experience that. I lost like a lot, like crazy. <laughs> cannot sleep. Cannot sleep like few days. <laughs> yeah, man. And uh, definitely yeah. dumping all the, dumping all the mm -hmm. eggs in uh in one basket. You know, I've got a wallet for every day of the week. You know, I'm not, I'm not messing. You know, yeah. and, and, and hackers uh they never sleep. You know, uh, have you seen the hackers? Uh, any hackers trying to eat? Uh, new attack vectors recently that that we should be aware of. Sorry again, again. Oh, I'm sorry. Missing. Yeah. So, just asking about hackers. Have you seen any new attack vectors 
be deployed that we should be aware of? Is there anything that as a tactic that's uh, being used now? Uh, currently, no. But for the agent, I I saw new um new approaching, like for for pro, okay, for for people like me. Uh, we uh, we checking wallet a lot, right? We checking another wallet, like smart money wallet. Uh, we know smart wallet. They uh, maybe the insider or, or they uh, have a good connection with the project. So the hacker also know that, and uh, well, they uh, they send a token, a random token to the wallet, and from the explorer we see that it look like the the wallet owner is uh, swapping that token, but they did not. And if we follow and we we buy that token also, we lost everything. So it's uh, the target uh, people like us, like me, who check in the wallet. And uh, that's it. I think it's, it's a new new thing here. And uh, but, but for new buy, they they okay because they know they don't know smart wallet. <laughs> they 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 they're not uh, the victim. Uh, but um, yeah, I see that's a new thing. But for me, I I never I track I never track by by that. But my friends they told me they lost money. So uh, okay, I think it's a new thing. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I'll just double click on that. I mean, one of the things that I've seen a lot more of lately, and I think you know anyone that's native, you know, knows, is just this notion of you know bad actors and impersonators. And so I'll, I'll tell you kind of two things that I've noticed. One you know, best practice, turn off your Discord DMs, because what I've noticed is sometimes someone will join a Discord community and then they will basically make their account look like they're a moderator or make their account look yes. like a main account. And then they'll DM you and say, congratulations, you got whitelist. Here's the link. <laughs> um, and then you click on that. And the next thing you know, you get drained. The The other thing that I'm seeing more of, and unfortunately, I'm a I'm a, a target of this is um, is what I call the auto bots, you know, not to be confused with transformers, but um, you'll have these automatic bots that for me, for example, what they'll do is they'll block me. And then they'll set it so that it auto replies to my tweets. And, and it's pretty obvious which which ones these are because it says something like, you know, whitelist available or, you know, airdrop live. Um, and usually what you can tell is if you, you know, read the name of the handle, they've replaced an L with a one and they've replaced a zero with an O. So, you know, at first glance, you might think that it's real, but but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what they're doing and kind of how to protect yourself. So um, like if you see on my um, on my handle or on Alan's handle, we have like the little the little hash flow H. You know, if you click yes. on that, it then takes you to the hash flow handle and you can tell that that's, you know, a verified, you know, company Twitter handle. What I've noticed on a lot of these bots is they'll have a little square and, you know, the square is so small that you don't really know exactly what it is. Right. So you click on it and then what you'll see is the company that it's associated with is completely irrelevant. So it'll say like, you know, a pizza, a pizza joint or a plumbing company or a pool cleaning company. And, um, and that to me tends to be like one of the best tells. So I, I find in general, like, you know, I don't click on links. Um, but if I'm ever curious about a link or a handle, when I click on that little square and then it launches a very non-relevant, you know, company that's been verified, um, that's usually a tell. And, and that's exactly what they're doing is they'll basically, you know, they'll, they'll create a fictitious company that looks like a mom and pop shop, get that verified then what they'll do is create new handles, get those to kind of join that organization. Then they'll go and verify those handles, right? And, and again, they'll just misspell by like one letter. Um, but I think, again, like best practice, click on that little square, see what it's associated with, you know? Yes, yes, agree. Um, yeah. But for me, for me, it's like, uh, for, um, it's really, um, uh, for me, I never click any phishing uh, website or anything like that. Yeah. And I never, and I, I never believe anyone DM me for, for the good thing, <laughs> like, uh, yep. like okay, you congratulations or something. No, I, I never thought thing like that because I I know what I'm doing because I, I really know what I'm doing and, and yep. who I'm talking with. So, but for new by people, yes, um, they they fall in in that tricky really easy. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, one thing it's funny. Like one thing we do even at Hashlow from a marketing perspective is we try to think through how to get information out that doesn't require link clicking, right? So a lot of companies, what you'll notice is, you know, they'll make an announcement and they'll make a thread and then they'll have a link to like their medium or something like that. What, what we do that's a little bit different, you know, purely just to kind of help protect people is, you know, we'll turn that stuff into images, right? And we'll post it as an image so there is no link to click on, right? Um, or we mm -hmm. might acknowledge, you know, link in bio, and then you can go to the bio link and click that because you know that that's you know protected and verified. But but I think it's a I think it's a good tip. Um, just to pivot a little bit, 
you know, into, into the TradFi space, you know, obviously, you know, we're seeing some pretty serious TradFi entities like BlackRock and, and others, you know, publicly supporting digital assets now, how, how times have turned. Um, do you envision that we might be closer, you know, to mass adoption than many believe? I mean, how likely do you think it is that some of these ETFs get approved? Oh, yes, I, I, I love it. Like, I strongly believe that we are going to see the biggest bullshit ever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, everybody will, everybody, the mass adoption will be here. Uh, the, um, uh, the multimedia that we talk about crypto and Bitcoin and uh, everywhere. And, you know, the, the last thing the, the is um, PayPal. They, uh, they have the stable coin now, and, uh, which is really, really nice. So later on, we can convert to uh, stable coin easily. It's 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 like uh, even me here in Vietnam, I can I can use PayPal. So every country can use PayPal. Right? Like people will, will convert to uh, yeah uh, the stablecoin D very easy. It, they they can buy a stablecoin easy. For now, if you want to buy stablecoin, you have to go to a city like exchange and you have to yep. buy uh go through uh P two P or something like that, right? But now yeah. with with PayPal, you can buy a stablecoin easy, and now you can start your uh, trading journey, something like that. Yeah, um, yep. yeah. And and I, I strongly believe that in um, in the next post cycle that we we see the biggest uh, mass adoption ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, I think you know my my, my POV on the PayPal news was it, it it was a bullish sign for me, right? Because yes, you know those companies, you know, coming from Amazon myself, you know, those companies have very recognizable brands, oftentimes very trusted brands. And, you know, for folks that are completely new to the space, you know, uh, whether or not we like it, I think they're going to be more apt to, you know, go with the name that they know and know that and, and name that they trust. The other thing that I find in yes. general, you know, self-included is you may see normies onboarding and, and you know, via the PayPal stablecoin. Then once they're in, you know, anyone that's intellectually curious, you know, they get the crypto bug, they start diving deeper, doing their own research, and then as a result, start discovering, you know, the USDCs and USDTs, and then they might say to themselves, oh, well, you know, even though I came in through, you know, PayPal, um, I actually like this better, or I like this company ethos better, or I like, you know, the founders better. And so you'll then see folks start to, you know, I think adopt other things like the, um, the analogy that I always I jokingly use is uh, when you're going to open a coffee shop. Um, the best place to open it is directly across from a Starbucks, right? Because Starbucks is always going to have a line, which means folks will then discover you and then you'll start to see the foot traffic pick up in your own coffee shop. And then eventually that, you know, that brand becomes recognizable in its own right. Um, you know, sticking on the TradFi piece for just a little bit, um, you know, and, and obviously I think we've seen, you know, some some movements in the past. I think some of those movements are starting to change or, or not become affected. But um, but what kind of off chain sentiment have you noticed over the last few cycles um, that you typically see moving the market or or actually driving you know traders into action? Mm, this thing is like in, in overall market, right? Yeah. Um. Mm, because um. Uh, okay, let, let me, uh, because this question is like, uh, it's, it's quite difficult for me to, uh, to say here, but yep. uh, like, uh, um, okay, because people always want to get rich quickly, Yeah. right? <laughs> it's um, because uh, we all want to uh, find opportunity to get rich quickly, and that's that is the, the thing we drive people to make people uh, move to crypto market. So I think it's, it's, it's a straight to the pawn already. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree with you. It's funny. Like one of the, one of the things I, you know, as a marketer, like I always look to is, uh, is PR and press, right? Because I think, you know, obviously we have the coin desks of the world and the, in the block works and block meets of the world that, that most of us follow. But, you know, you have to remember that normies, normies aren't reading crypto native press, right? They're reading, you know, fortune and Bloomberg and tech crunch, um, you know, or even kind of more, you know, mainstream media outlets that aren't even finance related. And so it's so funny because these, I remember during like the beginning of meme coin mania this year, um, there ended up being, I think it was like a Pepe article in TechCrunch or something. And a lot of people were asking me, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? And I was like, I, I think it's a good thing because what happens is you now reach kind of mass awareness, you know, normies, et cetera. Um, they again, see it, they're aware. 
And then to your point, what happens is FOMO. They go, oh man, like maybe I should go buy a bag of that because, you know, it's, it's, it's clearly a big deal. You know, we all yes. know that at that point, you know, they're a little late to the game, but, um, but I do think press uh, in general, especially across, you know, TradFi and, and more kind of mainstream outlets um, can, can drive some pretty significant, you know, positive sentiment and, and, and inflows. Um, so I think just going on to that one, and I think this is something that almost everybody's always curious about, like, how do you typically approach, trend, you know, trading against narratives? Because um, obviously some narratives phase out very quickly. Um, some can become cornerstones of the industry. Um, you know, some evolve and change. Um, how do you how do you approach narratives typically from a from a trading standpoint? Mm, yes, we see uh, many narratives phase out really quick. Right, they die maybe just one one day only. Like early this year, I see the narrative die quickly in just one day. It's really fun because many people tracing uh, the the money and they end up by in the top. Um, for me, um, I I not I'm not hurry to rush anything. I I have to scale the market first. I know I must know everything uh, in the market first, right? They have to I'll have to list down uh, what they have in the market right now. Maybe the money currently will flow into this particular narrative, but then maybe they will move rotate to another narrative in the next few days or a few weeks. So I am um, I don't know, but I prepare. So I just uh, buy it early and I uh, I hold it. So <clears throat> uh, my my I, I already always scan the market, or scanning the market and, and watching for new narrative by uh, uh, follow many people, follow the people that I know that they have something to talk to share, because narrative is is about story or, or about. Uh, some uh, event, right? And uh, we know from those event or story, they will make something. So I just follow uh, good people, many people, and I watching them. I uh, uh, go to Twitter every day and I see, and uh, okay, maybe this is new, and I mark it down. I uh, I will see it, and um, yeah, that's that's how I I, I find narrative and uh, keep tracking it. And and, yeah. and uh, never by the top because you, if you are late and you are late, <laughs> yeah, hundred percent, yeah, hundred percent. I think like a couple of things I would kind of call out. Like I, I I agree with everything you said. I think you know one of the challenges I think for a lot of folks is uh, is you know who to listen to. You know who's a trusted source. I mean you know obviously there's certain news outlets. Um, I do tend to follow a lot of the reporters at those outlets. I, I look at kind of what they're talking about. Another thing that I do is um, on Crunchbase. You can create a free account and then you can follow kind of the VCs that know what they're doing. Right. So like the dragonflies and the electrics, you know, the folks that are that are very native. And I also what's great there is I get like a daily email of um, of investments that they've made or um, or even just kind of news um, that mentions them. And then sometimes what I do is I look at that and I go, OK, did they just invest in four of the same sector or, you know, did three of these VCs, VCs all, all invest in the same sector? And it, it doesn't mean that that narrative is going to start that day. But it means that like if and when that narrative comes, I now kind of understand what propelled it to begin with. Right. Um, I think yeah. two things that I really dislike in this industry, just to kind of call it out, um, is one, the notion of fake narratives. And um, I did a um, actually a podcast with uh, with Block, uh, I think it's Blockmates a while ago, where I talked about this notion of fake narratives. And, um, and, and what I mean by that is there's a lot of companies that'll do one of two things. They'll either generate their own fake narrative. And, and it's, again, usually tied to press, right? They'll go and do a big BD deal. You'll notice that um, only they as a company or project talk about it. The other side doesn't. And then they try to turn that into a, a large narrative, right? They try to spin it. Um, and that's, you know, that's PR 101. But again, um, it's very deceiving because I think the average person assumes this is a narrative and then may buy that token. Um, but it's, it's, it's really just press and media manipulation at its finest. The other thing that I've noticed that I, that I really don't like um, is this notion of narrative writing. And, and the best example I can give of that is kind of the AI narrative. Uh, I worked in AI at, at Amazon headquarters for three years. So I'm pretty, pretty well versed in, you know, AI today, AI tomorrow, what's possible, you know, applications and usage. And what I noticed was 
you had a bunch of you know new AI projects launching. I would read the re- the white papers. You know, even friends of of mine like yours would reach out to me and say, "Hey, like as an AI, AI guy, what's your take on this?" And you can tell pretty quickly like who who knows what they're doing and who's full of shit. Um, but then what I notice is every project's like, "What's our AI narrative?" And and the best example of this is like all the chains launching their own version of chat GBT, right? It's like an easy thing to skin and roll out quickly. But again, like that's narrative writing, right? The project is saying, okay, if we make an announcement tied to this AI narrative, that's going to drive hype for us and then Mm -hmm. drive speculation and interest. And so I think, um, you know, I'd recommend to folks like go back and find that episode, but the more you understand how fake narratives are created, and then the more you understand how projects try to ride these narratives artificially, I think the more you can also protect yourself by not investing in those companies. Um, like one, it's funny, one policy that I have here at, at Hashflow is, is we just don't do that, right? So when there is a fake narrative that comes out, you know, obviously the FOMO in me says, oh, we should ride it, like user adoption. Um, but we don't, right? Like we have for ourselves, we have our roadmap for the year. We know what our narratives are on a quarterly basis. Um, and even if that's not the popular narrative narrative at the time, that's our narrative, right? And, and I yes, think over time, yes. you'll start to see more of that. Like projects that I trust in general may not be talking about what's um, what's most timely right now, right? So a great example could be if I were a narrative writer, I'd be launching a Telegram bot right now. I'm not launching a Telegram bot right now. Maybe down the road, I will or, or, or see the benefit of doing it. But if all of a sudden I launch it tomorrow, to me, that's just clearly narrative writing. And, and all you're doing is, um, in, my, in my opinion, prioritizing yourself over users and customers. And I think that that's just, that's just wrong. It's unethical, you know? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I, I agree. I agree yeah. with that because um, uh, when I searching for a narrative, I I always try to find a solid project. Yeah. Like a really yep. good one. I I don't know when when people will like it. Why like, like intention will move interest will move to the that narrative. But I know they're doing good. Uh, yeah. They, they they keep going. Okay. Because yep. if I buy it and in the beginning I, I said that you should lower your expectation. Yep. Right. Yep. I, I can hold a token for for two years, right? It's normal for me. So yep. like we can lower expectation. We buy a good one. We hold, and uh, in in next next year is is can give you a really great return. Right? Yeah. We never know, but but the good project, but they will keep working until the bull cycle, and um, yep. and yeah. But for the bad project, like you said, uh, fake narrative, they will die quickly in few days. Exactly. And, exactly. Yeah, and come with your money. Yes. Yeah, and I think like you know two two things I kind of call out. One, um, and, and not everybody falls in this bucket, but you know a lot of um, crypto native press and crypto podcasts um, they don't do fact checking, right? And so I think you also have to remember like when a founder goes onto a podcast or when an article comes out, you know the the way that that works is you know I have my PR team generate a press release. That press release goes out to all the different media outlets. You know, they pick it up, they might, you know, tweak it a little bit. But again, like this is not TradFi press, right? Um, and so when I hear a founder on the air talking about this and talking about that, I always approach it with skeptic- skepticism, right? And I know like as an optimistic person, that's not always the, the best mentality in this industry. But I think, again, you, you're better off questioning everything and then doing your own research to either confirm your assumptions or, or dispel them, right? Because um, yeah. what I've noticed even, you know, when I was the CMO of Arbitrum is, you know, you have very large projects um, with very large market caps that, that do this fake narrative and narrative writing. And again, like, I think a lot of people um, look to those kind of top 25, top 50 projects as like the most legitimate ones in the space and the ones to trust. Um, the other the other tip I have for folks is uh, subscribe to company newsletters. You know, I know email is like very web too, but what I do notice um, is, you know, whatever is con- whatever's contained in that newsletter that week, if I start to see it consistently tied to whatever the narrative was on Twitter that week, that to me is a sign of, of a company that's narrative writing. And um, and again, it just makes me one, probably not <laughs> hold a bag of that token um, or mm-hmm. two, just understand that like there's an MO here um, and that I shouldn't just instinctively trust everything that I read, you know? Yes. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. What um, I'm curious, you know, just in terms of, um, you know, going back to narratives or even just, you know, traders in general, what um, what patterns or traits have you noticed about traders that successfully perform year after year, you know, versus just one bull market cycle? Because, you know, I'll tell you one thing that I've noticed um, with with some of the like top 25 traders that I know is to your point, some of them just get lucky, right? Like they have one good call. It pumps four thousand percent. 
but then you look at every other call and it's it's down, right? Um, I think yes. with you, what I find fascinating and part of part of why I'm such a big fan is I typically see a lot of green, you know, across your portfolio. But but I guess you know, have you noticed things, you know, within yourself or with others that you look to um, that folks can kind of look to as as inspiration? Uh, sorry, again, again, the, your last question. I yeah, it. I yeah, it. yeah. So, so just to repeat it, like the question was, what patterns and traits have you noticed among traders that perform year after year versus folks that just, you know, again, get lucky or, or have success in one bull run? Uh, okay. Is, is, you, you want to, to listen to my experience myself or you want to know about other other guys <laughs> because i would, I, say, I would I, say both i mean obviously i look to you as, as such a great source of alpha yeah yeah sure because also, because yeah yeah because because you you know um many influencers or caller they they call a lot because so many tokens like i i see when i see their channel just one day i see like maybe 100 message oh my god like but and, and each message is about one token and, and it, it's really crazy Yep. Um, but no, for me, like, I, I cannot do like that because I, uh, I research about the token I, I bought, right? I research before I, I, I buy it. I'm not, I'm not just looking the chart and then say, okay, this, this is going to bam or this is going to hype. Yep. Or people are going to buy it or no. I, uh, I check in the, the project and uh, to see um, uh, the Twitter. To, I have to access the Twitter and go to Telegram and I read the website and uh, the docs, my white paper. Or GitHub yep. or whatever they have, I, I understand the concept first, and I know they're going to do something. Okay, but then maybe they will deliver something, maybe they not, but but they're trying to do something, right? And yeah, it, it, it should it should be good. So I uh, okay, this is maybe the good one, and I I call it. So for me, um, it's not it's not buying many token, and then uh, you will have a lucky one. It's not my style. Yep. Okay. Yep. Because, because because so many people will run out of money before they, they got a lucky one. Trust me, that many people yep. will lost will run out of money because they are new buy. They don't know how to uh, uh, protect uh, themselves. They just spend money and yep. then they no more money. Uh, that's a yeah, problem. I, I, I agree with you, Henry. Like it's actually funny. Like one this is you know one of the things that kind of um, made me bullish on you as an individual was I did notice that in general you know the tokens that you're talking about you tend to talk about them for much longer periods of time. You know, it, it can be a couple of times in one week, you know, for two weeks or three weeks versus other traders that I've looked at in the top 50, where to your point, you know, they're calling out a new token every day or even every, you know, three or four hours. And, um, and again, I think, you know, while diversification is good, I just started to question that a little bit. And, and I did notice that those traders just from a, a macro perspective, don't outperform folks like you that, again, seem to be more invested in four or five tokens at a time versus, you know, 25. So I think that's a, I think that's a great piece of alpha for folks. Yeah. Okay. I, I got to share you one thing. This is important um, for you guys. So, uh, this will save you a lot and, and bring a lot of money for you. In, in the bear market, we, uh, we rotate a lot, right? We, rot we hold just one month or two months. A maximum is is really long already. People just hold for one hour, and then sell a token. But in the bow in the bow circle, if you hold a token, it will give you massive gain, massive. You just maybe you just hold for from six months and it give you a thousand again. It's crazy. But if you keep you keep the the familiar with the the bow, the bear market, you grow tight, and then in in the the well, in the next circle, you cannot hold. You cannot hold anymore. You cannot hold a token anymore. And you will try to sell it early. I, I see it from people, from many people. They cannot win big in the market. And and they maybe they just win like uh, double their portfolio only. And it sucks because they see many people, new people. They hold and then they, they win like 100%, uh, 1,000% uh, uh, or or ten thousand percent, crazy, right? So you have to learn how to hold in uh, in bull market. It's important. It's really important because in bull market, the the cotton will the the, the 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 token price will keep going up and going up and going up. That is a problem of the bull cycle. It keep going up. 
<laughs> and, and and you cannot tell and you want to sell it early. You feel enough, okay, we rotate to another token. But no, it's end up keep going up. So um you have to learn how to hold a token. It's very important and very, you have to practice it. Trust me, you have to practice it. Because right now you, you cannot hold uh, any token longer than one day. <laughs> People will sell it right away when they, they have a chance. <laughs> And uh, it, it's a bad habit for an uh, investor. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I mean, I, even from my own trading experience, I've noticed that uh, it's, it's usually better, you know, again, not financial advice. It's usually better to take profit, you know, as much as I might kick myself for missing out on another, you know, 30% or 50% or even 100%, you know, again, I'd yeah, rather yeah. get that profit than, than it go down to zero. So I think, again, like, diversification and discipline, you know, the two D's are, are just so important. Um, you know, we're going to pivot now into something that I know you are uh, very excited about because um, I see you talking about this quite a bit. But um, but trading bots, you know, they're definitely having a moment. Um, I'll be honest, I'm a little hesitant to use them. I, I, I you know, I, I'm excited about them. I just, again, just get a little bit worried about, you know, the risk profile or, um, you know, again, bad actors impersonating them. But, um, but, but what's your take? And, you know, do you sort do you foresee like Telegram and Discord bots, you know, really being a big meta, this next bull market and really being something that's kind of here to stay versus, uh, versus just a narrative or fad? Okay. You want to talk about you, uh, uh, the Telegram bot, right? Sure, yeah. Mm, okay, I, I actually I use Maestro more than Unibot, yeah, I, because I I uh, I'm familiar with that more than another one. <clears throat> uh, about the security, I think we uh, in the market right now nothing is one hundred percent secure. So why you have to worry too much about secure uh, when using the 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 bot? <laughs> Like as I said to you, the trading wallet should be small, and uh, you have to, to learn how to control it to protect yourself first, and it's really important. Like for me, uh, when I buy a, a token, I uh, I feel okay. I should transfer to uh another wallet to hold it, and that wallet should not connect to any any bot, and and uh, yourself. So actually, you should you should never worry about it. Uh, because so far no one like get lost because of this, and um, <clears throat> and uh, about the 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 bot meta, I want to talk more about the bot the Telegram bot meta because it's really interesting. Uh, it's it's not just in short term uh, narrative, but I think it will last to the next puzzle. Uh, for example, um, uh, Ma Maestro, right? Uh, it saves you a lot when trading. Uh, for me, I I uh, I always drive like on the road. I don't have many time to sitting on the desktop, like other people, or laptop or whatever. Like I use mobile a lot, and and the the Telegram bot saved me really really a lot. I can swap, buy and sell quickly, or I can check in the token quickly because I I use a lot of um uh, mobile. So it saved me time. It saved me. It can I can check the token by using the bot to like how secure it. Yeah, it has a scam token or whatever like that. And I also can check by uh, Telegram bot. And uh, for now, I never touch uh, uh, Susie Swap or Uniswap anymore, honestly. And and yeah, you should not worry about it. You have to learn how to protect yourself, and then you should not worry about it. Again, I uh, yeah, <laughs> but I, I I I don't have any worry about it actually. Listen, man, you're you're making me uh, you're making me FOMO a little bit now, but um, but no, I I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's interesting to me because obviously a lot of these bots are uh, are powered by AI, and again, like you know, as a former AI guy. You know, I, I've seen a lot of sophisticated AI bots, you know, a lot of companies use them for customer service, you know, a lot of companies use them to kind of automate um, even just things internally within, you know, big tech companies. So so I definitely, I think in general, believe more in kind of the usage of AI towards bots versus, you know, some of these, again, nonsense narratives that I hear about. Um, how, how do you see the emergence of AI impacting traders? You know, are we... Are we about to see some massive advancements in trading tools, um, you know, ways to, to make trading easier and more sophisticated? 
yeah yeah i love ai i love a lot um, if you follow my channel you uh, i always said that you should learn how to use ai such as check gpt it's really amazing for me uh, really amazing it, it, it saved me a lot uh, for a researcher from like me i i search a lot of information um i search for uh, by google right but for now i just need to ask chat gpt and it gave me a lot of information i need it really understand me uh, that's that's amazing and um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I will be here and everything will be here for, for we, we, uh, we are early, <laughs> actually, we are very early. And uh, in, in next year, or maybe, yeah, just next year, we, we see a, uh, a new story about AI or a new application. But I think uh, it will be, it will be big in, um, in the next cycle. And uh, yeah, for, for simple, I want to talk more about another project using uh, AI, same uh, like uh, my favorite one is uh, Jenny. It's work the same like uh, ChatGPT. Yeah, and, but you uh, love you love Genie. I see. I, I definitely I, see you talking about Genie quite a bit. Yeah. Yes, because I, I love it. I it's not just investment, but I love the tech behind, and I love people who work working behind, and uh, they really understand uh, the need. Because as I said, Telegram is uh, like a culture. Uh, crypto, right? Everybody need uh, must have a uh, Telegram account, and um, and project we have a Telegram group uh, for community. So for uh, the chat, the, the journey is like again um, a way to communicate with with community better, like a chat GPT. Like if if you really use the chat GPT, you will love you will love it, and uh, and the, the journey like gives me the same feeling about when you see uh, GPT. It saves a lot of time and, and yeah, and, and fun to have fun with it too. So I think I think it, it will be here for a long term, not just like shock meditate and, and die quickly. No, I don't think they will die, but instead they will involve and they will expand more and more like more use case. I think they will have more use case in, in, in the future, not just for Telegram. Because um, uh, we we keep moving. The uh, the fun thing that uh, I enjoy the market is I always see something new every day. People have so many like, creative things. I, I enjoy the market a lot. Like, every day I check the the news yeah. and I see something new. <laughs> oh, okay, this is cool. Something like that, and uh, and I just know that they uh, they will keep moving. Yeah. No, I I agree with you. I mean, I think like you know, again, as someone that comes from big tech. Um, Part of what drew me into this industry was, you know, my own intellectual curiosity. But I will say, you know, whether it's founders or folks like yourself that I meet, like I do find folks in this industry to be very intellectually curious, very experimental, very innovative. Um, and, and that's how new technology evolves. And that's how new technology is created. Right. Because, you know, in, in, in more of the traditional business sector, I mean, you know, the model, it's like someone invents something, it's extremely profitable or successful. And then the next thing you know, everybody else is replicating it, whether it's social media platforms or, you know, AI tools. Um, but it's, it's, it's really interesting. I think the other thing that like, we don't talk about enough in this industry, but I, I also used to work in machine learning. And I don't think that people fully acknowledge yet the impact on machine of machine learning on AI, right? Because, you know, obviously we have the AI narrative, we have great tools like ChatGPT, which I'll, I'll share some of my use cases there. But, but I think again, you know, when you start to bring machine learning into AI, you know, what that does is it just expedites it, it, it even faster, even further into areas that again, you might not have even thought of, um, you know, going back to ChatGPT, there's a couple things that I, I use it for that I really like. I agree with you. I think it's a great tool. Funny enough, uh, everyone on my team, I, uh, I demand that they bookmark it on their toolbar. Um, but one, it's a great way to understand and evaluate tokenomics, right? So you can say, you know, hey, break down the tokenomics of, of this company, this project, this token for me. And it does a really nice job at that. Um, and then the other thing that I really like about ChatGPT, especially for normies, is it really helps break down like complex topics and subjects. So, you know, obviously like we, you know, our, our DEX is MEV resistant, um, but you can literally say things like explain MEV to me like I'm five years old or explain oracles or nodes or whatever, like I'm yes, five years yes. old. And, and what it does is it literally, you know, basically tell, it creates a really great analogy. Um, yes. And as we know, analogies are one of the best ways to onboard normies. So I always encourage folks, like when you're reading a white paper or you're seeing something that you just don't know what it means, like not only can you save yourself significant time, 
but like it'll translate it in a way that is very easily digestible and understandable. And so um, th those are two two great use cases there. Um, last thing I wanted to kind of call out and, and I'll give you kind of my take on this is, um, you know, I do get a lot of high profile traders that reach out to me whenever a, um, a new AI project or new AI token launches. And, you know, they'll say to me like, hey, can you vet this a little bit for me? Like, do you think this is legit? Do you think this has a has a future? Um, and, and one of the things that I typically do is I go and look on LinkedIn at, at where the founders come from, right? Because, you know, at Amazon, obviously, we had a pretty significant AI practice, you know, very high quality engineers, obviously the same at Microsoft, Salesforce, like all these big tech companies. But when I see an AI project where, you know, founders come from big tech, where again, they had a lot of time, a lot of financial resources, a lot of other, you know, like very talented developers, for me, that's usually a bullish signal for a project or, or it's a reason for me to kind of read the white paper and look a little bit more closely. But um, but when you're investing in bots or, or even just using bots, um, how do you approach your research or, or what do you look for to legitimize something or make you feel comfortable with it? Mm, yes. <clears throat> Normally, when I am um, looking at pro uh, any project, I, I read the, the white paper. I, uh, I, I read it and I fully understand it. And um, for normally, uh, with the, the, the dev and uh, the team, they put a lot of effort and, uh, uh, on the project. So I know that when I read the newspaper, it's really detailed. And it's explained a lot. Uh, it's explained a lot of what are they doing. And, um, and if a good team, they know what they're going to do. Because uh, if they can break down their plan in, in uh, many sectors, and then, okay, this team know what they do and they have a clearly a plan how to do it. Like they break down by smaller part and uh, I will see, okay, this, this is uh, doable or not, it is workable or not. If it's like, uh, it's workable, then okay, I, I, I will go deeper a little bit. We see uh, uh, how, how, and maybe sometimes I, do, I will ask the, the team member, how are they going to do this? How are they going to do that? And if they can answer my direct question, you know, it's, it should be the direct question and it should be a logical answer. Uh, there are no hidden uh, information or some thing, I think, that make me feel uncomfortable, then I will go for it. Um, yeah, normally I sh everybody should read the news, uh, the, the, the white paper or, or the doc. So that's how I, uh, I, uh, I, I file the token and uh, file the, the project. Yeah. yeah. No, I, uh, I agree with you. I'm a, I'm a huge white paper fan myself. I mean, what, you know, one best practice that I think more projects should actually uh, take on is, you know, especially like, and I've noticed this in the AI space, like I'll read a white paper and there'll be a lot of different algorithms and equations and things. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and obviously you can use, you know, again, chat GBT to translate yes. some things for you. Yeah. I, I, um, I always use that, you know, I got me, I got me the whole, uh, uh, the, the white paper and I, I passed to the chat GBT and then asked them to, okay, make a shuttle for me, make it, uh, I can understand it. Yep. And it really, it, it do it, it can do it. Like, okay, like, I, like it saved me a lot. Right? Sometimes, sometimes some dev, they, um, they are technical guy, right? They are not, yeah. they, they talk something I cannot understand. It's so hard to understand because I'm not yeah. a tech guy. Correct. So, but but the ChatGPT saved me. Like um, you can transfer to the language I can understand. Yep. So yep. so it yeah that, that yeah. that's how I use the ChatGPT too, like every day. <laughs> it's really a lot save save me a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what, there's there's two things I would say like to that. Yeah, a hundred percent. I I couldn't agree more. But like, one thing I think projects should do more of, um, just knowing that you know we're trying to drive mass adoption is, you know, you can create the most technical white paper in the world, right? But you know, after you go through these equations and these sections, you know, add a paragraph that says, in other words, blah 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 blah, and and really write it in a way that normies can understand. Because I think again. Not everybody's using, you know, AI tools to translate things. Um, a lot of people might read a white paper and go, wow, this is super sophisticated. These guys must be smart. But like <laughs> yes. just making it more accessible, I think, is, is something that everybody kind of needs to do. Um, the other thing that you called out that I that I really do agree with is um, is asking questions. Right. Like for me, yes. if I read a white paper and I don't understand something, um, sometimes I'll uh, I'll DM the founder of the project or the CTO uh, or even the company account. And, and I would argue like most projects will respond to you. And the other reason why it's good to do that is because if they start to get the same question from five, six, seven people, they might start to say to themselves, you know what, this is way too technical for the average person to understand. And then hopefully they go and do what I said, which is create 
either a, an addendum to the white paper or, you know, again, some sort of a medium blog post that really starts to distill this stuff and make it more accessible for folks. So, um, yeah, great, great tips for sure. Yes. Awesome. Well, look, Henry, we've been cranking for like an hour. We, we want to be respectful of your of your time here. So we just have a, a couple more more questions for you. Oh, um, you know, so one of them is, how do you stay updated on the latest trends and developments in both the, the crypto industry and, and trading practices? Are there are there any resources that we should all know about that you can point us to? Ah, OK, it's, it's actually many, there are many tools for researchers. But I don't use it a lot. But I, I, actually, I know them. I know how to use them. But for them, uh, like I, I don't use it for on chain data. Uh, <clears throat> for me, okay, for my for me personality, I, I use Twitter a lot. Well, I can be good not call it X, but uh, I use Twitter a lot, and uh, I am um, checking information from uh, the Twitter every day. Every day, I I, I uh, checking information from Twitter. So. Uh, uh, when I see something cool, I, I use another tool to check uh, for research. <clears throat> for example, if, if I want to check on chain data, I will use Defi, uh, Defi Lama, right? It's the simple things. And um, I don't use other tool too much because I can find any information I need in uh, Defi uh, Lama already, like uh, the volume and TVL and uh, project on chain new project or whatever, like something like that. And um, and I can predict the uh, the money, where the money going. So I follow the money. Uh, and when I know where the money, I will research more about the project and uh, more, yeah, more things. So uh, I just follow the money. <laughs> it's, it's an easy game for me. And uh, yeah, the tool I just more use more stricter and Defi Lama. That's that's in my my too powerful tool already. And yeah, you can also uh looking for another tool, but for me it's too much. I I don't need them. For for example, some some people they are checking uh wallet on chain, right? They were checking the money from uh, uh this wallet to another wallet. Um, uh, but for me I I'm not that kind of uh researcher. Because I don't really care about the smart money. Uh, smart money, for for example, you you have to think like this: smart money and VC, uh, venture capital. They they are here for a long term. Like they invest for for two years, five years. Uh, they, they they can survive the market for a long because they can handle the pressure much better than us. Uh, retailer, you you tend to. Uh, uh, survive just wait maybe one day or two day or one month and then you run us up money. Uh, so if you follow the uh, the smart money or uh, the VC is really dangerous because they they are here for they can they can buy a token invest their portfolio for five years. It's not just for one month. So I I for me I uh, don't use uh, I just focus on the one I think bring me the most benefit. Uh, so. I think it, 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 for me it, it's enough, but for um, professional researchers, like we have more tools. Yeah, so Twitter and Defi Lemma is more powerful tool already. <laughs> like uh, uh, for Defi Lemma, I I researched a lot of uh, good project uh, from the Defi Lemma. Uh, yeah, I, I think you you can uh, try it because if <clears throat> for me. Uh, if I master a tool like the Philema and it, it gives me a lot of benefit, it much better than use a lot of tool. And uh, it just wastes time and energy. Right. But for me, I'm not I'm not young anymore, so I just focus on the, the one I think uh, the most benefit. Yeah. Preach, my friend. I'm not young e anymore either. <laughs> yeah, like, yes, I know, I know. <laughs> like, like, like we, we cannot sitting on, on the chair like, like, like 10 hours anymore. I, I just sitting on the chair like one hour and I have to move. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, it's, totally. a, it's a pain in the back and, and everything in there. <laughs> right? So I, I just focus on the one night I think is uh, most benefit and uh, yeah. bring, bring benefit for me, money for me. Uh, do, do not try. Uh, okay, you can try a new thing. You can uh, see, okay. Maybe it's bring you some a new tool to make it better. Yes, I, I do it. I love it actually. 
but end up I will end up being using the one I I feel uh, mo- most powerful. So yeah, it's my yeah, it's my recommendation. Not don't waste time on too many tools. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Well, listen, my friend, it has been an absolute pleasure. I uh, I really appreciate you uh, making this your first space. I think uh, you brought the alpha, my friend, and I think brought, you know, just a lot of valuable information to, to the community. But, um, you know, let me close out with um, just big announcement on our end today. We uh, we officially launched on BitThumb. So shout out to South Korea. Shout out to anyone in the audience from South Korea. We uh We've seen some pretty massive volume today, um, about 50% of what we typically see in a week just in Korea. I think the other thing that I'm excited about um, is we're seeing that come from um, from the, the Korean currency. So I look at that and say, you know, mass adoption, army adoption. I think every project should always be thinking that way and trying to bring more people into the space. But um, but that's what I'm excited about right now. So, you know, last question for you, you know, what are you excited about? What um, what are you looking to- forward to in uh, in 23? Mm, what what are exciting in in the next year? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll extend it for you. I'll give you a six month window. What are you, what are you most excited for in the next six months? Oh, it's it's old chapel. <laughs> like like we are we are in, in we are good, man. Um, I think we are we are bottom already, and um, we are going up, steady going up. We have nothing to worry. Like yeah, we're going up now. Yeah, the bottom is already here. And um, the market will be uh, warm up again, and it's steady going up and up and up. So it's for me, it's a uh, bullish. It's, it's bullish, not not bad anymore. <laughs> so uh, end of the the year will be the good year for us, the most of us. That's all I wanted to hear, my friend. Well, again, thank you so much. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. I know, uh, I know how busy you are and and how much you put out <laughs> put out every day because I can't even keep up. But um, but yeah, everybody, go you know follow Henry. Um, definitely go check out his Telegram, which I think it's a link in your bio uh, that, that takes you there. But uh, but once again, thank you so much. We really appreciate you. Yeah, thank you, thank you, everyone. Close it out, Alan. Uh- Absolutely. The bottom is in. You heard it from Henry. My bags are, you know, celebrating with joy, and so am I. So, look, basically, <laughs> uh, Economics is brought to you by Hashflow. We have weekly conversations with awesome chads like Henry here. You know, we're 25 episodes in, so Henry, we appreciate you being our 25th guest. It's a special number for us, and you know, cheers to the next 25. We're definitely going to have you on soon uh, in the future, sir. So, enjoy the, the rest of your day, Henry. We appreciate you spending time with us and everyone else. We shall be chatting soon next week. Enjoy your weekend. It's almost here. Andrew, any final words? Peace. Peace. Bye, everyone. Much love. (laughs) Bye. Bye, buddy.